Long story short, the world isn't slowing down. The one advantage we have is that we are competitive in the world market. Time is money on the machine. We want to make sure everything's done the first time out. We want a value and a skill that no one else brings to the table, and we want to do it faster than anybody else. It doesn't matter what kind of facility you are, you're going to have to certainly start thinking about applying the lean principles in today's ultra-competitive marketplace or you're not going to survive. I kind of looked at the business and saw a huge amount of physical asset and resource with a very skilled um, employee workforce that had been doing things largely the same way for a great many years. At the time, it was kind of disjointed. While a lot of their processes were truly cutting edge, they were still in somewhat of the same rut as the rest of the industry. Guys have been doing this for a lot of years and they were kind of set in their ways. What our vision was, was to come in and bring mass manufacturing principles to something that was traditionally considered more of an artisan type of industry. There was a group of people brought in. We decided that we would find a partner to do it. To go through a lean training. They came in and helped us out with our lean process. Lean is a process that drives out wastes. One of the big things is making sure that the improvements that were put in place up to that point were sustainable and being sustained. We met in small groups and took on different projects and kind of learned a little bit about how lean um, could be a benefit for us. We had started with a lot of just open and frank discussion. The biggest thing was uh, workplace organization. Organization for the workplace. We bought copies of the Toyota Way for every manager in the building and it was an assignment for them to read in the first two weeks of the company. How do we move jobs through here? More uh, organized, less mistakes, faster way of uh, doing it. Our approach to that was to put them in a classroom for really, I think it was about the first two days. There were great presentations that the folks at GRCC and our people here put together that kind of opened their eyes to the world of assembly plants. Many people think of lean as a process that applies to a mass production manufacturing facility, the typical auto assembly plant. We took a lot of them on tours of auto assembly plants, showing them how things are done in mass manufacturing environments and challenging them as to why it can't be done here. We're pretty much unique in the respect that we only make one of anything. It doesn't have to be a, a mass producing same part over and over. We can apply a lot of principles. Once they kind of started to understand that those things can be done, we started introducing them to standardization concepts and to understanding waste, which is really everything that we focus on here. We brought the layered process audit to to the shop floor. The supervisor in the department will go around every day and just randomly check several machines to make sure everything is in order. The remaining three to four days of every session was really spent in trying to implement and learn on the floor hands-on. That makes sure that all the checklists are filled out, the paperwork on the machines are filled out. We'd like to be able to eliminate the waste of waiting. The flow through the plant is mapped out. We've organized the whole facility to try to reduce our wasted movements. And then coming back for group discussions to talk about what they saw and exchange ideas with each other to see where they missed something or where something could have been taken even further than they went. They brought groups together and not even groups that for like a machine department, it wasn't all machinists in there. It was people from throughout the shop because everything we do in the machine department affects either upstream or downstream. I think the employees appreciate being involved in the, in the whole lean process as well as in the decision making process at various, at all levels. From them deciding it themselves, they get the, they have the buy-in. They're still proud of what they're doing because it, it is a skill that they're able to do. In year one, we spent greater than half a million dollars on training, and, and we recovered our half a million dollars in year one. The amount of time that we ended up saving on our projects, our first round through, more than um, recovered what went into our projects, and that was probably the most exciting thing about it. It's, it's very important that continuous improvement keeps occurring because our, our jobs change, our, our requirements change. Continuous improvement is just that. You continue to try to improve. We have to adapt as those things change and become more, more efficient. You get to where you think you need to be and then you look for the next step. You never stop. 
the one advantage we have over any region of the world we compete against is time. At least a 50% improvement on ours. The Chinese region, it's a four week lead time that they lose to us just to ship a tool from here to there. So our primary focus with Lean was, how do we take that four weeks and make it become six, eight, 10, or 12? Because the more we can make that gap, the less price becomes an issue for our customers. Because no matter what they save on that you know, couple of percent coming out of China, our 12 weeks in terms of our savings where we want to be is worth exponentially more to them than the few percent that they're saving buying something out of another region of the world.